The story of Charles Taylor is a tale of an ambitious man who broke out of US prison in 1985. About two decades later, after a devastating civil war, Charles Taylor rose to the position of president of Liberia and ended up in British prison right after. In this edition of His Pool Media, I will take you through the story of Charles Taylor, a man who went from prison to president and back to prison. Let's dive into the details. Please stay with me, Gabriel here. But first, let's meet the man, Charles MacArthur Ganke Taylor. Born on the 28th of January 1948 in Atrington near Monrovia, the capital of Liberia, Charles Mark Arthur Taylor was one of seven children. His father, Nelson, worked as a teacher, a lawyer, and later as a judge. Charles Taylor was an American Liberian, a group of freed American slaves who colonized the region in the early 19th century. His mother, Zoe, was a native from the Gola tribe. Charles Taylor attended Chamberlain Junior College in Newton, Boston, Massachusetts during his early years. He later transferred to Bentley College in Massachusetts and graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics in 1977. Meanwhile, before this time, his studies did not go well in Monrovia as he was expelled from secondary school for unruly behavior. During his years as an undergraduate student, Charles Taylor joined the Union of Liberian Association, the ULAE. He quickly rose through the ranks to become the national chairman of the organization. In 1979, when Liberian President William Tolbert visited the United States, he met with Taylor after he had led a protest outside the Liberian mission in New York City. Taylor and his group were protesting against the policies of the president in Liberia. But William Tolbert was clearly impressed by the young Taylor and invited him to return to Liberia. At the beginning of the 1980s, Charles Taylor returned to Liberia. But his return coincided with a change that would alter his own fortune and that of his country for decades to come. Don't forget to boop the like button on this video and subscribe to His Food Media. It will go a long way to support our effort. Thank you. Shortly after Taylor had returned to Liberia, President William Tolbert was murdered in a coup led by Samuel K. Doe on April 12, 1980. Ironically, I would say, Taylor supported the coup and was rewarded for it. But as you see shortly in this video, this reward would mark the beginning of Charles Taylor's problems. After Samuel Doe had seized power and established the People's Redemption Council, Charles Taylor was appointed Director General of the General Services Agencies GSA. This position placed him in charge of procurement for the Liberian government. In May 1980, Charles Taylor was fired from this position and accused of stealing at least $1 million. To avoid prosecution, however, Charles Taylor fled Liberia in 1983 and returned to the United States. Even though Charles Taylor was excited for his return to the United States, that could not solve his problems. On the 21st of May 1984, Charles Taylor was arrested by two U.S. Deputy Marshals in Somerville, Massachusetts, on the request of the Liberian government. The warrant was for him to be extradited to face charges of embezzlement in Liberia. Charles Taylor quickly assembled a legal team led by former U.S. Attorney General Ramsey Clark to fight the extradition request. He argued that his alleged act of law-breaking in Liberia were political rather than criminal in nature. He also claimed that the extradition treaty between the two countries had elapsed. However, this argument was countered by Assistant U.S. Attorney Richard G. Staines. Staines argued that Taylor was to be charged with theft rather than political crimes. To support this argument, Liberian Justice Minister Jenkins Court also flew to the United States to testify at the proceedings. But after the proceedings, Charles Taylor was detained in Plymouth County Correctional Facility awaiting extradition to Liberia. But on the 15th of September 1985, Taylor and four other inmates miraculously escaped from jail. You can watch details of his escape in a video displayed in a card here and I will also leave a link in the description. 
Shortly thereafter, Chastello met with his wife Enid and his sister before he was driven to Staten Island in New York. From here, Chastello disappeared. Meanwhile, in July 2009, during his trial at the United Nations Special Court for Sierra Leone, Charles Taylor claimed he may have been assisted by a CIA agents to escape from prison in 1985. The CIA also admitted that Taylor worked for them in the 1980s but failed to reveal the nature of his job. So, was the subsequent war in Liberia part of his job for the CIA? Kindly you leave your thoughts in the comment section. But here is where his story becomes tricky. After Charles Taylor disappeared from the United States in 1985, his whereabouts for the next four years was actually unclear. However, several sources claim that he was sheltered in Libya, where he received guerrilla training under Muammar Gaddafi. It is believed that after this training in Liberia, Taylor traveled to Ivory Coast, where he founded the rebel group National Patriotic Front of Liberia. NPFL. Charles Taylor was now ready for the next most difficult phase of his life. On Christmas Eve of 1989, Charles Taylor launched an armed rebellion from the Ivory Coast border into Liberia to overthrow the regime of Samuel K. Du. These attacks marked the beginning of the first Liberian civil war. By July 1990, his forces controlled most of Liberia and entered Monrovia. Meanwhile, during the battle for Monrovia, the NPFL split into two factions. While Charles Taylor maintains control of the NPFL, his former ally, Prince Johnson, controlled the newly formed Independent National Patriotic Front of Liberia, the INPFL. By September, both divisions of the NPFL had declared victory over Samuel Doe. But the Johnson-led group had the upper hand in the city of Monrovia and would eventually capture President Samuel Doe and torture him to death. You can watch details of the capture and torture of Samuel Doe in a video displayed in the card here and I will also leave a link in the description. Even though the objectives of seeing the end of Doe's government was going as planned, Taylor had a new enemy in his former ally. As the nation's attention shifted from Doe, a civil war between Charles Taylor and Prince Johnson's forces ensued. In the meantime, the civil war quickly turned into an ethnic conflict with seven factions among indigenous people and the American Liberians fighting for control. In 1995, a peace agreement was signed, eventually leading to the end of the war and a presidential election in 1997. Emo Sawyer, the former Liberian interim leader, alleges that Charles Taylor's ambitions extended beyond Liberia. According to him, Taylor wanted to re-establish the country as a regional power player. As you will see shortly, that is mostly where his downfall began. After the Liberian Civil War officially ended in 1996, Taylor ran for president in the 1997 general elections. He campaigned on the notorious slogan, He killed my ma, he killed my pa, but I will vote for him. Charles Taylor won the election in landslide, garnering 75% of the vote. Although the election was adjudged to be free and fair by international observers, analysts believe Charles Taylor had a significant advantage from the outset. First, his control over the airwaves of Liberia was used to bolster his image. Additionally, there was widespread fear in the country that Taylor would resume the war if he loses the election. During his time in office, Charles Taylor cut the size of the armed forces of Liberia. He dismissed between 2,400 to 2,600 former personnel, most of whom were ethnic Crown soldiers. In 1998, Taylor attempted to murder one of his political opponents and former warlord Roosevelt Johnson. This singular attempt led to clashes in Monrovia and resulted in a massacre of many indigenous people. The event was also one of the factors that led to the outbreak of the Second Liberian Civil War. By 2003, renewed opposition to Charles Taylor has reached breaking point. The newly formed Movement for Democracy in Liberia MODL, was at the heart of this rebellion. 
and here is how it all went down. In 1999, a rebellion against Charles Taylor began in Northern Liberia. This time, it was led by a group that called itself Liberian United for Reconciliation and Democracy (LURD). By early 2003, the LURD had gained control of Northern Liberia. The same year, a second group backed by Ivory Coast emerged in Southern Liberia and quickly achieved successes as well. This group was the Movement for Democracy in Liberia MODEL. By the summer of 2003, the government of Charles Taylor could only control about one third of Liberia, including Monrovia. But as part of peace agreement that ended the Second Liberian Civil War, the MODEL was disbanded. Meanwhile, Charles Taylor was not only fighting in Liberia, he was directly involved in the conflict in neighboring Sierra Leone as well. On March 7, 2003, the United Nations Special Court for Sierra Leone SCSL, issued a sealed indictment for Charles Taylor. About three months later, in June 2003, Alan White, a prosecutor to the Special Court, announced publicly that Charles Taylor was charged with war crimes. Taylor was accused of aiding the Sierra Leonean rebel group Revolutionary United Front RUF through weapon cells in exchange for blood diamonds. The group was said to have committed war crimes and crimes against humanity as well as recruitment of child soldiers. The prosecutor also accused the Taylor's administration of harboring members of Al-Qaeda. Meanwhile, during Charles Taylor's visit to Ghana as part of peace talks with the LURD and the MODEL, the indictment was unsealed, foiling speculations that he might be arrested there in Ghana. In a swift response, Taylor's chief bodyguard and military commander Benjamin Yetan threatened to execute Ghanaians who live in Liberia. But with the backing of South African President Thabo Mbeki and against the call of Sierra Leonean President Ahmad Tejan Kabar, Ghana declined to detain Taylor, who returned to Monrovia. However, calls for Charles Taylor to resign were mounting. During Charles Taylor's absence for the peace talks in Ghana, the United States government was alleged to have urged Vice President Moses Blah to seize power in the palace coup. Upon his return, Blah was dismissed but would be reinstated few days later. In July 2003, Charles Taylor's forces halted LURD rebel attempt to capture the city of Monrovia. But US President George W. Bush continued to put pressure on Charles Taylor to leave Liberia. Consequently, on July 9, Nigerian President Olushigono Basenjo offered Charles Taylor safe exile in his country on the condition that Charles Taylor stays out of Liberian politics. On August 11, 2003, Charles Taylor resigned as president of Liberia and handed over power to his deputy, Moses Blah. Blah oversaw the country until a transitional government was established on October 14. At this time, Charles Taylor had fled to Nigeria, where the Nigerian government provided houses for him and his entourage in Calabar, the Crossiva state capital. But this was not the end of Charles Taylor's problems. In November 2003, the United States offered a $2 million bounty to whoever captured Charles Taylor. However, as part of the peace agreement, Taylor was assured self-exile in Nigeria. On December 14, 2003, Charles Taylor was declared wanted for war crimes and crimes against humanity and a violation of the 1949 Geneva Conventions. However, the Nigerian government declined to comply with Interpol's demand to hand over Charles Taylor to them, insisting Taylor would only be released if the Liberian government requested his return. On March 17, 2006, Liberia's newly elected president, Ellen Johnson Salih, issued a formal request to Nigeria for Charles Taylor's extradition. Eight days later, on the 25th of March 2006, this request was granted. But because there existed no extradition treaty between Nigeria and Liberia, the government agreed to release Charles Taylor instead of extradition. 
Three days later, Charles Taylor disappeared from his home in Calabar. When Charles Taylor learned that the Nigerian president Olishiguno Basinjo was ready to hand him over to the newly elected Liberian authorities, he devised a plan to escape by road. In theory, this was simple. On the evening of 27th March 2006, he disappeared. He headed for Bronu State in the northeastern part of Nigeria. Two days later, Charles Taylor was at Gamburun Gala Boda Post near Cameroon. He was driving under a false identity with diplomatic license plates. A local shopkeeper testifies that Charles Taylor was dressed in a large white bubble and was accompanied by a woman and a small boy. His car was stopped by border guards and Taylor's identity was eventually established. And that was the end of the run for Charles Taylor. He was quickly transferred to Liberia where he was handed over to the United Nations mission in Liberia. Initially, Charles Taylor was indicted on 17 counts of war crimes and crimes against humanity committed during the conflict in Sierra Leone. However, on the 16th of March 2006, the charges against Charles Taylor were amended. Under the amended indictment, Charles Taylor was charged with 11 count charges still bordering on war crimes and crimes against humanity. But on the 3rd of April 2006, Taylor pleaded not guilty. In January 2009, the prosecution lawyers finished presenting its evidence against Charles Taylor and closed its case on the 27th of February 2009. In July 2009, arguments for Taylor's defense began and closed on 11th of March 2011. At this time, the process to reach a verdict began. On the 26th of April 2012, the verdict was announced in Les Chendam, the Netherlands. The United Nations Special Court for Sierra Leone unanimously ruled that Charles Taylor was guilty of all 11 counts of aiding and abetting war crimes and crimes against humanity. Charles Taylor was sentenced to 50 years in prison on the 30th of May 2012. At the age of 64, this was more or less a life sentence. However, Charles Taylor appealed against the judgment. But this appeal was turned down on the 26th of September 2013. On the 15th of October 2013, Taylor was transferred to British custody and he began serving his sentence at Hessian Prison Frankland in County Durham, England. Effort by his attorney to transfer Taylor to Rwanda in 2015 failed. Interestingly, about 28 years after Charles Taylor broke out of jail in the United States, he went back to prison in the United Kingdom. For details of how Charles Taylor escaped from US prison in 1985, please click the video displayed here. Don't forget to book the like button on this video and subscribe to his pool media. It will go a long way to support our effort and I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.